We spent the rest of the evening cleaning up the kitchen and trying to cook something with the ingredients that survived the mayhem. Ren no longer complains and I can tell she's really trying to help me as much as she can. She's doing great at times, but all in all, we somehow manage. When it's time to do the dishes though, Ren disappears. I decided to resign myself to the fact. I mean, she must have done more housework to date than ever before in her entire life. <laughs> Guess that's the last one. <laughs> it's not just the housework that made her uh, tired. She was really going at it. Like she really had a hate boner for that Kitsuna. I put that black... Played black... Back, paid back where it belongs and can't help but listen to my surroundings. It's already quite dark outside. I don't even want to look at the clock so I don't get upset. But, just as Rin promised, the house is completely silent, and the silence doesn't seem ominous. To get it over with and finally calm down, I decide to go through all the rooms. Oh, there you are. Ah, Rin is sleeping peacefully on the couch. I quietly walk closer, trying not to disturb her. In her sleep, my self-proclaimed protector looks completely innocent. Her eyelashes flutter slightly, her breathing is deep and even. She's wearing her, all her usual clothes and clutch to her chest is the same strange book we found under the floorboards. Rin must have laid down to read and fallen asleep. She's probably exhausted. I might want to take that book like next time, but uh, at the moment I'm gonna cover her with a blanket. Although Rin is fully clothed, the house is chilly, and it can't get even colder in the morning. I get a couple of blankets and carefully cover her up. Rin doesn't seem to notice anything. Her lips are slightly parted, and she's still breathing deeply and evenly. As I lean over to straighten the blanket, I sense the delicate floral scent. Is that her perfume? <laughs> That's a strange thing to admit, but... Even though the scent is delicate and rather sweet, I think it suits Rin pretty well. She may have a terrible temper, but she sure is very cute when she's not busy destroying my self-esteem. <laughs> I smile to myself and smooth the blanket near Rin's face until my hand touches something hard. It's... Dick! It's that buck. Maybe I should put it away. Or should I take a look? Just a little bit. Well, since we have the option to take the book, uh, might as well. <laughs> I stare at the book as it moves up and down with Rin's chest. Mesmerized. But the book or the chest? I mean, it could be the outstatic placement. Probably the chest. But I really can't take my eyes off it. Yeah, definitely the chest. <laughs> the book has a very plain brown binding. You can't escape uh, out of this one. I know you were talking about boobies. That would uh, I have took its stall on the cover, and that's the most unusual thing about it. From what I can tell, anyway. Does it really could need some sinister power and stuff? What are you hiding? Is that even about the book itself? Now that I think of it, Rin was acting a little strange when I asked her about the find. Am I not allowed to even get a peek at something found in the house I live in? I mean, I should just probably go for it. What if there's something my aunt should be aware of? I slowly pull the book out of Rin's relaxed fingers and freeze for a moment. Rin is still peacefully s uh, asleep. Curious to kill the cat achievement. Please don't kill my game! I breathe out softly and start examining my catch. Let's start with the beginning. This is... My name is Yasunori Jiro, and I intend to dedicate my life to exposing a great lie. 
the light that has put our allies to flight and strengthened the folds of every living thing bound to this land. A light of Okuyama clan blinded by greed has been repeating for generations. What? Fukuyama? No wonder Rin didn't want to let me look. <sighs> Rin mumbles something in her sleep and starts moving. I freeze with panic, but to my relief, Rin is simply turning over. That's it for me. I don't feel like taking any more chances. I put the strange book down by the couch and hurry to get out of the room quietly. A lie by the Fukuyama clan. By the by greed. What if this thing is actually cursed? I really don't want to explain myself to Ren in case something happens. After all the messing around with the old furniture, I absolutely have to bathe before going to bed. I rummage through the closet for suitable towels. But I can't get the strange book out of my head. Or should I say, the diary? Fukuyama, blinded by greed. Rin seems to be blinded by anything but greed. What could their ancestors have done? Did they slander someone? It seems that the feud between Yasunori and Fukuyama has been going on for a well, very long time. But the entry didn't seem to be about Yasunori's tarnished honor. honor. Maybe it's the author of the diary who was trying to slander the Fukuyama family? But then, why hide it, and even in his own house? <sighs> it was so complicated from the very beginning! How do I stop thinking about it now? You should have read more- Ah! What? What? Yeah! There's something gonna matter, and it scares me half to death. It takes me a minute to realize that it's just a piece of paper with some strange symbols on it. Oh, <laughs> the thoughts my thing is... Uh, damn it, Ren! She got her too! Okay, if that's what it takes, let it be! I mean, at this now I have a high cut occult security ba bathroom. Ah, and here too! There's another piece of scribbled paper glued to one of my tubes. Looks like a generic strawberry set of bad form to me. But Ren must have determined that somehow a doorway to the demon world. Okay, I've heard a couple of creepy stories on how mirrors can pose a danger, but my favorite bathroom? Just why? Ugh, those magic eye girls! I'm a little hesitant, but Ren probably knows best. Sorry, I think I had a different tube. Hmm? <gasps> oh my lord! As soon as the pomy water touches my skin, the words of the day recede. So warm! Ah, I feel the tap of hot water and whip up a pile of scented foam. The water feel makes my body feel nice and light, and my strained muscles finally relax. The air feels thick and vicious because of the steam. The room gradually fills with the soothing herb fragrance. The water is pleasantly hot and steamy. It then with June's whole body, little by little, warming it up. Nate! June's face starts to glisten with the smallest droplets of water coming from the thick, damp air. Gradually, her mind begins to wander. She's thinking about the weird things she's been witnessing lately. But in the warm safety of the bathtub, it's not the occult that troubles her mind the most. She starts rec recollecting what she saw in the living room. That Kitsune. And Ren. All the things they were... doing. Okay, Monster Gun. Uh, why? Did I just... Did I do what now? Well, that's just... Embarrassing. Good thing nobody will ever find out any of this happened. Uh, I guess. I hope I wasn't too loud. Well, at least I wasn't screaming any names. Right? I wasn't screaming any me names. Was I? Aww. She was six to the bathroom. 
Pretty, pretty good air bubbles. Eh, guess I'll just move along with this. Why am I even getting excited about Fukuyama? She's rude. At Barry. Uh, totally not my type! Uh, I really should get this up, I'm dead. I'll just enjoy my bed now. Go to sleep, and tomorrow everything will get back to normal. Yeah. I can fully rest my head on the edge of the tub. <sighs> I better not fall asleep right here. My eyelids are growing heavy. I give in to a moment of weakness and get enveloped by pleasant sensations throughout the body. For a while, I'll, I just listen to the tiny bubbles of foam crackling. The cozy emptiness in my head slowly begins to fill. Kitsuna, huh? Who would have thought they existed? I open my eyes and stare at the white ceiling. If only I had known, I would have never... Oh. What's that? What's what? It turns out that the ceiling is not entirely white. The septic got it. A narrow stain? Maybe the roof is leaking? Never mind. I'll cl clean it up tomorrow. Oh well. The work in this house never ends. <laughs> what the? The lights are flickering. Oh, great! Great, now it's the... Suddenly, I feel... Moment. A strand of hair clinging again to my back slides down. As if something heavy were hanging from it. A narrow slides down my shoulder. Crawling to my collarbone. I realized that. <laughs> it's not my hair. Rin! Rin! The strand reaches my throat. I grab it with all my strength to try pulling it away. But it doesn't work. The strand is tight and slimy. My fingernails are tangled in the muddy clumps of unnaturally long hair. Rin! Help! Me! My arms and legs are being twisted and pulled in different directions by the malicious strands of hair. That stain on the ceiling scratches, tearing it, tear, tearing into the, into the, into, into the plaster. The ceiling swells, bulges, and finally bursts. An abominable funnel is gaping upon me. A black, hungry mouth that's going to devour me. Ah! Uh, uh, break out? No, 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 no! I try to break free with all my strength, but I only, uh, but I always splash out the water. A terrible final face creature bends over me, grabs me by the shoulders. It is much stronger than me. I scream, clutch at something, pull. A chain with a cork remains in my hand. Useless. The wire begins to run out, but my head has already disappeared under the surface. You are useless. It is much stronger than you. And you've never been strong to begin with, June. My screams turn into bubbles. It presses and presses and presses. Is this my first dead end? Or something? It presses until the funnel of soap foam is colored red pink. Fight or flight? Edit six out of... So there's uh, six endings. Uh, okay, I. Uh, yes, please. Fight back! My side goes down. I don't have the strength to fight it. I command. Day. Be cool. Patches of color and light float before my eyes. A figure emerges from them. So, so, so familiar. It's Rin. Rin! <laughs> But it's in her face, I see a terrible crater, like a cracked old wound. She's slowly leaning over me. The fuck, Rin? No! I try to pull away with the last of my strength. My hand bumps into something. I grab it and throw it at the monster. It seizes me. Gah! It's okay. It's okay. I'm here, June. I open my eyes. Rin is... <laughs> Quack, that was close! Rin is beside me. Her face is perfectly normal. We're sitting on the bath, bath, bathroom floor. There's that weird fragrance. I have water streaming off me. Floating the floor. I have to... Wipe it. Ah! Rin cowers 
Jesus Christ. Carries me with a large tower. Loading the water. And it suddenly pulls me close to her chest. Don't worry about it. Ren. Let's get out of here. Can you walk? I think so. There are little pieces of satin crunching underfoot. Bad salts. There's an empty plastic jar by the door, and Ren kicks it out of the way. We sit down on the couch. I'm starting to shake. Ren wraps something around me, squeezes my hands. You're really cold. I'll make you some tea. Okay? I nod. Rin glances back at me a few times, but eventually leaves for the kitchen. Jesus Christ, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I feel like a long time have passed. Rin doesn't come back. I look around the room, as if seeing it for the first time. All the things are in their usual places, but everything seems somehow unfamiliar. Or maybe just surreal? What a strange feeling. I found a bundle of my clothes on the couch. I tidy myself up as best as I can. Then I go looking for Bren. When I walk into the kitchen, Ren is standing still by the stove. Ren? Ah! Sorry, I was, uh, lost in thought. I'll do everything real quick. I'm sorry. I don't know, I've let you down. This time, to Ren, what is it? Isn't it obvious? I'm boardless. What are you talking about? Ren sits down on a stool. All this time, I've been lying to you. Lying to my family. To everyone. What do you mean? I don't have any magic. No! No hunter's eyes either. No! I can't see or feel anything otherworldly. My parents hoped I had the boon of our clan. And so I thought I couldn't disappoint them like that. That's why I started lying. I wanted to be special. I wanted to live up to the expectations. To deserve being what they thought it was. So I studied. I tried my best. I was hoping that if I, if I worked hard enough, if I learned enough, my magic would awaken. I was hoping that I would be able to obtain the right to stand alongside my ancestors, to serve my cause properly, as I was supposed to. But the truth is, I don't have magic, never had it, and never will. All my knowledge comes from books, and all I'm good at is pretending to be a real exorcist and a stalker. I am a fake. Ren. When you came to town, I came up with a new lie. This time, I was lying to myself. I was able to convince myself that if I were close enough to the source of dark magic, my powers would finally awaken. But it didn't happen. And it couldn't have happened because I'm not gifted with the power. I should have come clean the minute I realized how serious your situation was. I should have, but I couldn't. Because doing so would mean I admit to you, and to myself, that M was worthless. But, you just saved me in the bathroom. You saved yourself. When you split the salt, the spirits calmed down somehow. Sp spill, not split. The truth is, I'm not even sure why that happened. I'm sorry, June. I didn't want... I really didn't want anything to happen to you. I had to see something. Imposter Among Us? Achievement? Uh, thank you, game. I had to see something anyways. I understand that. But I need a minute to pull myself together. Encourage? It's okay, Ren. I'll try the other thing some other time. Maybe we don't always get along, but... No, no, you didn't mean any harm. Are you not mad at me? I shake my head in silence. 
But why? How? How can you see that after everything that happened? I was really scared. I still am. But I'd be a lot more scared if I were alone. But what? Every time I need help, you come. You may not have any magic in you. Maybe you can't drive the spirits away, but you're always by my side when I need someone to hold on to. You are trying to help me. It's my own fault. You've been trying to warn me from the very beginning. I'm the one who decided to stay in the house, right? And then you came running in the middle of the night when I called. Even though you knew better than I did, it would be dangerous. You are brave, Ren. You are real. And even if you can't help... I can! I will! I have a plan. And if it doesn't work, I'll try something else. Hmm? Rin jumps up and grabs me by the shoulders. We're going to figure this out, you hear? I will make more proactive seals and perform a purification ritual. That should be enough to get us through the night. We'll get plenty of rest, and tomorrow we'll have both hands on that fox. Oh, so we'll be- so we're gonna eat her out together! Ah, oh, how nice! What? Did I say something funny? No, I just remembered something. Rin, are you sure you want to? Yes, I really want to, and I can do it. I just don't have a choice if you still believe in me after all you've been through. Thank you, June. Don't be silly, but... But? Thing is, I have one request. What is it? Oh, now that's embarrassing. Would you sleep with me? Uh, uh, well, uh, it's just, it's just, I mean, we only just met. I'm starting to suspect something. I mean, I can't tell something's clearly off. But if you really want to, if I were a tomato, uh, it do be time to take me off the branch. Wait, not like that. What? Now Rin looks like a ripe tomato too. Of course not. I didn't think of anything like that at all. I, for one, am a decent girl. What do you mean you for one? Am I the indecent one then? You said that, not me. <laughs> WHY YOU?! GET BACK HERE! Rin is trying to get away from the punishing hand of justice, so the couch cushions come into play. Uh, take that! I will not tolerate insults from a girl in a meme sweater! <laughs> oh, don't be a sorry loser, you snorty. <laughs> it could be our yelling that is... Driven all the ghosts away, or maybe those new talismans Rin made are really working. Can't tell for sure, but either way, it all seems peaceful and quiet. Eventually, we do fall asleep together, like two decent girls. Right? Right? The dark hot water gently envelops my skin. White steam rises, rises above the surface. Hey, I, I thought I was supposed to be sleeping with a girl. Oh! Oh sh- Oh! What? Oh shit! Ah, what is this place? This used to be a home! Say, do you want to know the truth? Uh... Yes? Once there lived two families in the same village. Both rich and respected. There was also a third family who lived in the forest. Their riches were autumn leaves, and respect was their treat. Mm -hmm. Come summer, they pranced in the fields, and where they, uh, and where they did, the crops grew plentiful. In winter, it was strength waned, and they rested in a wondrous place, a uh, palace, the entrance to which was kept secret. Only one of the village families was worthy of that secret. But the second family wanted to know how to get into the palace too. And so they did they decided to arrange a marriage between the two families to get what they want. Before the wedding, the bride said to the groom, If you love me, tell me how to enter the forest palace. It was winter. Don't go any more down, please. It was winter. 
uh, tell of free houses. Why are you telling me this? Look. I'm looking. The water is red. Why is it red? Ah! Jeez! Uh, wait, copulation button! We're going shopping! In the next episode.